You are looking at film clips from worldwide newsreels. The title reads, Communist Riots in Tokyo, Japan. A long way off, you think. This communist mob is in Venezuela, right in our own backyard, attacking an American citizen and his wife. A kangaroo in Havana, condemning hundreds to the firing squad because they incurred the displeasure of Castro and his crowd. This is happening 90 miles from our mainland, less than 10 minutes by jet bomber, less than five minutes by rocket missile. And where do you think this is? It's communist-inspired student rioting in San Francisco, USA. Look at those faces. The face of communism in America. Is it not high time we ask ourselves? Ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Herbert A. Philbrick. What is communism? I've been on the inside of communism. I still have contacts. From this knowledge, I tell you as simply and seriously as I know how. Communism is a lying, dirty, shrewd, godless, murderous, determined, as J. Edgar Hoover says, a criminal conspiracy. I'm choosing these words deliberately. As I travel around, I still have people say, well, why are you so hard on communists? They're just another political party like any other, and a poor minority at that, and so misunderstood. Well, we don't want them misunderstood, and that's why we're making this film. And that's why I say they are lying, dirty, shrewd, godless murderous, determined, and it is not an American political party like any other. It's an outlaw organization taking its orders and instructions from another government to do everything possible to destroy our government. It's an international criminal conspiracy. In years to come, if democracy falls, historians are going to look back on this time in which we are now living, and they're going to say, how could any free and intelligent people living in a country like America let a gang of vicious outsiders come in and take over? Well, of course, the only answer would be that most Americans didn't realize or couldn't believe until it was too late that communists are what they are. That's why I want to analyze those three, six, nine words. And if you'll follow me, I'll guarantee that Ten minutes from now, a lot of you are going to have a new understanding of communism. Now, let's see if that isn't so. We start with lying. People wonder, how can a communist look you in the eye and tell one barefaced lie after another with a straight face? The way Bermico did with President Kennedy on Cuba. Well, the explanation is simple. Lying doesn't mean the same thing to a real communist that it means to you and me. For nine years, I walked streets like this to meet with other party members down dark hallways, behind closed doors, constantly changing meeting places to avoid suspicion. In musty attics or moldy basement rooms like this, we were taught by our communist leaders and ordered to believe that truth is anything that will promote communism. Therefore, Nothing is a lie if it helps the party. So the communists use the lie as a weapon, a shield, and a tool. When you keep that in mind, at last you begin to understand them. When a smiling Khrushchev says uh, the Russians in Cuba are technicians and farm helpers, well, you can suspect there are soldiers too. And when he says only defensive weapons were sent, well, you can suspect there are also intercontinental missiles and bombers. And when he says, now they remove them all, what do you think? Since it is their sworn duty to tell us whatever will best serve their cause, we should always suspect they are lying. Lying is one of their best tools for playing dirty. 
dirty, mean, despicable, ruthless. Slander, blackmail, corruption of character, to stock and trade. They recognize no such things as human dignity or any rights of the individual. Class hatred and open class warfare are their specialty. If they can get a few people killed, well, so much the better. As some were killed in this communist incited race riot. At this, they are not only dirty, but they are oh so shrewd. Give them credit. They know Americans better than most Americans know communists. They are shrewd with words. How many Americans would volunteer for the communist army? Yet, many enlisted when it was called the Abraham Lincoln Brigade. They went off to fight and die with the communists in the Spanish Civil War. When, in 1943, for tactical reasons, the Communist Party eliminated the Young Communist League, it instantly became the American Youth for Democracy. And they don't say, give us the right to operate subversively in our midst. They say, defend the Bill of Rights. They don't call their campaign against our Internal Security Act by that name. They used the Citizens Committee for Constitutional Liberties and the American Committee for the Protection of Foreign Bond. There's the American League for Peace and Democracy and so on. Well, that last mouthful combines a number of words our people like. Peace, democracy, even the American League. But this is only a drop in the bucket. The communists are past masters at getting other people to do their dirty work for them. They take over organization after organization in America in just two steps, infiltration and agitation. This is what they work at day and night. This is what accounts for much of their success. You want a shocker? Well, in that list up there, in place of those thinly veiled commie fronts, let's substitute some other names, respectable names, that have been infiltrated to a greater or lesser degree. I hope you are more than shocked. I hope you are aroused. Because we have it on no less authority than J. Edgar Hoover, the communists and fellow travelers have penetrated every category up there, and more. Well, you think uh, a few maybe, but it doesn't take many. It has been tragically proven time and again that one dedicated communist in a key spot, such as Alger Hiss in the State Department, or Harry Dexter White in the Treasury Department, or in any position to influence command decisions, can wreck our hopes, slaughter our soldiers, and weaken our nation. But we must hurry on. I've said these fellows are lying, dirty, shrewd, and I say...